Welcome, everyone. It's, it's really great to be here in the Bay Area, being able to give every one of you the latest and greatest from OpsCon in, in London directly. During these key, uh, this keynote, we are going to be sharing a few things about what we did the last year or so and the product releases which we've been working on. But first, I wanted to, to reflect a little bit on, on what brought us here. I get to travel a lot. You can see by the beginning neckbeard that I'm on week three of, of my travels. Uh, and while I really, really do get to travel a lot, one of the absolute highlights are GrafanaCon and, and OpsCon, where we are really able to connect with, with the actual people and, and get to shape and get to talk to the people who really care about all of this. We turned 10 years old recently, and we maintained and even accelerated our growth through the current macroeconomic situations. While others did layoffs, we actually grew. And I feel extremely fortunate and proud that we have both a thriving business and culture at Grafana Labs. And this is in large part because of you, due to our users, our community, our customers. Without the continued support of all the people in this room and people not in this room, we would not be where we currently are. So really heartfelt thank you. And we always do things a little bit different at Grafana. And one of the things which makes us differentiated in the open source observability space is our Big Ten philosophy. Big Ten for us means we prioritize interoperability with the wider ecosystem over our own short-term interests. Most companies make you send all the data into that one thing and then you get to make use of it. And then only if you're really done with everything, then you're going to get the value. We are different. We know that our customers and users have many vendors and teams using different technologies, and we actively encourage and support that. Our approach allows our customers to own their own observability story, not forcing them into any one thing. During the first part of this keynote, we have three themes, open source, cost control, and ease of use. Let's talk about open source first. Open source is at the heart of what we do at Grafana Labs. It is central to both our ethics and to our go-to-market strategy. And we used to look up to all of those big open source vendors, trying to replicate their success. And quite a few of them filtered over time. These days, we are the big open source vendor who's left. We are really charting a new course through rough waters with the current market conditions. And if I do say so myself, we're doing so quite successfully. When we say that open source is at the heart of what we do, we mean two different things, the external and the internal projects. If you look at Grafana, we have more than 1 million open source instances with over 20 million users. And our monthly active users are actually higher than many mobile games. We employ 11 of the 29 Prometheus maintainers, and we sponsor pretty much all of the feature work on it. If you look at any of the features over the last two or three years, sponsored by Grafana. For open telemetry, we are consistently in at least 11th place in contributions, up to sixth place recently. And we are ahead of many larger players who would have more resources to commit if they chose to. But we don't only sponsor the technical work. We also sponsor all the soft stuff. Like, for example, Jura C, who sits on the governing committee on work time. Or we are, how we are leading the Prometheus and open telemetry compatibility work. And how we are spearheading profiling as a new signal type within open telemetry. And speaking about the wider CNCF ecosystem, where we have and has various heads and roles, seats on the governing board, on the technical oversight committee, on the technical advisory group for observability and for sustainability, some of us have been members since day one. But we don't just support external open source. We are also committing to continuing to invest to make our own core offerings open source and keep them open source. LGTM, what developers put into PRs, looks good to me. But also logs, graphs, traces, and metrics. Stored in Loki, visualized with Grafana, stored in Tempo Mimir. But not only those. We have so much more which we've introduced recently. Periscope for profiles, K6 for load testing, Baylor for eBPF, on-call for incident response, 
far for front end observability. And most recently, Alloy, which is the only full open telemetry distribution, a collector distribution, which also encompasses the complete code base of 10 years of battle proving, testing, and performance gains of Prometheus. And we will continue to invest into both the third party and the first party open source. Let's talk cost control next. A lot of companies, a lot of business model, a lot of operating principles the last few years have been built on zero interest rate on the idea of functionally free money. We've always been different about this. We always found a careful balance between implementation speed and being prudent with our spending. And trust me when I say that this was quite a culture shock for a few managers and engineers when they first joined. But the thing is, if you do cost control right, not only does it make you more efficient and effective at your job, it also is more fun. Of course, you're not being dragged down by all the overhead and by all the stuff which you should be getting rid of. You actually slim yourselves down, you can be more nimble in your operations. It's much more fun for the engineers. So, over the last few quarters, we invested heavily in productionizing our internal techniques and created new technologies on top. To be very blunt about the point, you find plenty of vendors with mediocre and deliberately unactionable cost overview. You'll also find a lot which help you scale up your usage, but never help you meaningfully reduce your spend. I invite you to find any other vendor which not only gives you actionable insights into your costing structure, but also invests heavily in your ability to pay us less. Let's talk about the cost management hub. This brings together all the brilliant cost management features which we already built and have been using in production internally for ages. And stuff like adaptive metrics and like log volume explorer. But also it gives you things like the cardinality management dashboards and billing usage groups. This centralizes everything into one place, into Grafana Cloud, making it really easy to find, making it really easy to use. You're able to use the analysis tools and the visualization tools and the reporting and the everything which you're already familiar with from your observability to really drill into your costing structure. So we took all of those tools, built new ones, and we put them into a single toolbox for you to use and optimize your spend. We launched adaptive metrics at the previous OpsCon, OpsCon in New York City, roughly one and a half years ago. As of right now, we have 150 customers and we have folded away over 200 million time series across all our clusters. If you look at the pricing, this equates millions and millions of dollars save. Millions of millions of dollars which we chose not to earn. And this is becoming a very fundamental and unique strategy for Grafana Labs. We only store metrics which are needed to answer the questions which you are actually asking and deriving business value from. This is a good example of our long-term greedy strategy, where we strongly believe that we must only incur cost on you where you actually derive business value from and align those two very, very closely. It shouldn't be a huge surprise that we're also working on adaptive logs. It's the direction we are going into with all our telemetry systems. And we have an active research project to identify the logs you need and either fold them away or even sample or drop them. Initial progress has been really, uh, progress has been really good. There are differences in the different fundamental data types, so it's taking some time, but we are working on this. And if you are interested in this and if you are a customer, we have a closed beta. So um, if you want to try this, come to the Ask the Experts booth later and, and talk to us and we can, we can talk about it. Staying with logs, we announced Loki 3.0 at Grafana.com in Amsterdam a few weeks ago. Loki has been accepted by the wider developer and operator community. We've got over 100,000 installations in open source alone. And this group of people likes the engineering choices and the trade-offs and the experience which we have built. But also we learned a lot over the last five years. We've learned from customers that log aggregation, in particular in large companies, isn't just for developers or just for operators. There's a support use case, where last line support needs to really dig into the structure and into the logs of your application to find that one lost order. 
or the needle in haystack use case in the wider sense, which really did not align with the design goals and the initial design decisions of Loki. And to be very blunt about this, this used to be a pathologically bad use case for Loki, really slowing you down. That's until now. With Loki 3.0, we introduced this and we fixed it by using bloom filters. Uh, we introduced bloom filters and you know what I mean. Um, and we did see up to 1000x speed improvement. Not 1000%, 1000x. And with this, Loki is finally best of both worlds. Where it maintains the speed and the huge price advantage, but also enables you to quickly look through all your data if you need to. And there is ease of use. All of this is great technology, but you have to be able to use and consume it. Observability is becoming infrastructure. Water, electricity, internet, they just come out of the wall. If they stop coming out of the wall, you call someone, they fix it, starts coming out of the wall again. This is how we think about observability about becoming infrastructure, about being easy to use. We go away, we stay in the background, you can use and leverage the tooling, but you don't have to think about the why and how. You just get to reap the benefits and get on with your own business problems. Most of you will be familiar with the term crossing the chasm. Our projects have been really, really popular with this early adopter crowd. The people who kind of like it when it's a little bit hairy and maybe has a few rough edges, but you get the absolute bleeding edge of technology. And this group keeps evangelizing on our behalf, and this is great. But we also see significant adoption by the early and by the late majority. And those people are not as successful as we'd like them to be. Those people don't have the time, the expertise, or maybe just access to raw talent to get the best out of our products. And it's up to us to make our products easier to use for this early and late majority. So we introduce things like, for example, explore metrics. Like, for example, explore metrics. Um, I'm a Prometheus maintainer myself. I find writing PromQL easy to sometimes pleasant but I'm also very much in this early adopter demographic, so um, don't, don't, don't take me as the, as the canonical example. Explore metrics surfaces data and trends automatically. You don't need to write a single query to find outliers, interesting patterns, or other data worth investigating. We surface this to you, and you accept or dismiss the suggestions which we are making and interactively have a fully click path based way to build an analysis into your data without ever having to write a single PromQL query. But also to be clear, at any time you can flip back into expert mode and you see the actual query so you can learn from it and have a good feedback cycle to help you improve with the technology if you so choose, but you never have to. We have this system of hackathons at Grafana Labs, three times per year, any Grafanista can take a whole week and work on whatever they want. The only condition is, at the end, you have to submit a video talking about what you did. And then we have voting and we have the winner and everything. And last hackathon happened week before KubeCon. Um, we had something to basically build an explore logs feature. And the video was so good, we're just sharing it. Hello, I'm Matt Raya. Welcome to Grafana's Log Quest, a game show where we put new Loki features to the test. Two contestants will go head to head. One will show us how you would solve a problem today with current Loki tech. The other will show us how you use innovations in this hackathon to solve those same problems. Meet Cyril. Cyril has been working on Loki since 2019. Cyril, hello. Hello, Matt. Let's meet our other contestant, Jonathan. Jonathan is new to tech and he got his job here only because his uncle has got some dirt on Tom. I'm also going to have to play Jonathan. All right. Hey, Jonathan. I'm Jonathan. To be honest, I'm not really into computers, not really my thing. Right. So it's safe to say that you don't know LogQL, Jonathan. Uh, couldn't even spell it. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's good, isn't it? In round one, our contestants need to find out the misbehaving pod within the Mimir ingester service. 
Is Cyril to go first? Off you go, Cyril. So this is going to be super simple. Um, so first, we're going to go to explore. Well, I can see why Loki is so popular. Let's see how Jonathan fares. How would you do it with the new UI, Jonathan? Over to you. Right, well, I'll just pick the service, then filter by labels. This is done automatically for me. Uh, level is what I want, isn't it? I want errors. Let's have a look. Oh, and there you go. That's the pod with all the errors. Okay, thank you very much. The results are in. Well, Cyril, you used... Uh, many years, three or four years of LogQL experience. Jonathan didn't use any and only took a few seconds and is an idiot. So for round one, Jonathan takes the point. In round two, right, we found the pod, but there's been an incident and we need to find out which users were impacted by a particular incident. Uh, Cyril, it's you to go first. What do you got for us? We found the pod, again, very simple. We just need to remove everything. Excellent. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Jonathan, how are you going to cope with this? Uh, well, I'll just do one click here. Like, click, and then I'll just go and do another click here. Look, that one, that one took me two clicks. For round two, the point again goes to Jonathan. In the final round, we're looking for the version number of a service. But the trouble is, the logs are very noisy. Cyril to play. No, I'm not going to play. I know that I have to keep excluding things one by one and it's going to take too long. And what if I accidentally exclude the line that I'm looking for? I think Jonathan can just do it easily by pausing the extracted pattern. He doesn't even see the noise. He can jump right to the river and log line. Well, I think it's congratulations again, Jonathan, and thank you for watching. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an indication of how quickly you can delve into stuff with just visual aids. Of course, we are really good at pattern detection, we humans, uh, without having to write all the, all the complicated and having to learn about LogQL at all. And you're going to be shocked and surprised that we are exploring the same thing for traces. Um, there's always nuance between the different fundamental data types, so this is, again, taking some research work, but we are working on this and we are very confident about releasing this in the future. So, you might have heard about our Act 3, where in Act 1 we built best-in-class visualization. And in our Act 2, as a company, we focused on building best-in-class database engines for all the different fundamental data types. Now, Act 3 is about making things easy to use, about creating complete end-to-end -end solutions. We've built a series of opinionated, integrated, and easier solutions on top of our LGTM stack. For infrastructure monitoring, we have curated dashboards and alerts. We have the Kubernetes application. For testing, we have things like K6 and synthetic monitoring. And for IAM, we have solutions like alerting on-call incidents. And we're continuing, continuously improving all of these solutions. Tying back to an earlier theme, we recently launched the cost monitoring within the Kubernetes app. So you can actually cross-link between the two and start moving even more seamlessly between all the data which makes up the knowledge about your business. And also recently, we announced the general availability of our SLO management tool, allowing you to easily configure, manage, and defend your error budget based SLOs. Let's delve into application observability for a bit. We started the public preview in August. And thank you to all the close customer, uh, close beta customers who helped us make this a really good product for everyone. Some of them might be in the room, I don't know. Application observability is an open and opinionated solution. You instrument your applications with the open source open telemetry SDKs and send that data into our infrastructure using OTLP, the Open Telemetry Protocol, all using open standards. The data are then hosted in our backends, where we visualize them from the new application observability plugin. And again, tying back to earlier, this is Act 3. Just taking the thing, making it easy to use, and enabling the engineers to immediately derive value from the data without having to do any of the hard work. We announced Faro at the previous Opcon. AppsCon as the solution for monitoring front ends. 
far as an SDK, and it captures the front end of your applications. Again, you can send the data into Grafana Cloud, or you can just store it in your own open source packets if you, per, if you prefer. But if you're running in Grafana Cloud, you can also visualize all of this in our front end observability plugin. They can really understand the performance of your application as your customers actually perceive the application to be running. If you use traces, this means you can actually follow your complete stack through your complete stack. If you have an issue somewhere from the front end to the back end and everywhere in between. For back end developers, we also have great solutions. Applications written in Java, Net, uh, .NET, Python, similar languages can easily be instrumented with open source, open telemetry SDKs. And we're also contributing to the .NET and the C Sharp and Java SDKs for open telemetry, based on what our customers tell us where we need to go and what they need. Open telemetry makes it possible for us to offer you the breadth for all of those instrumentation produced by the open telemetry community and improves our and your speed of execution. But it also gives you confidence that the work you put into instrumenting your applications is going, to be, is going to be paying forward for itself because you're not locked in. You're fully on open source, fully on open standards. But that doesn't solve everything. There are hard to instrument applications. For example, if you're developing in a weird compiled language, if you don't have access to the source code, if you have many conflicting versions of that one library and you have an absolute hodgepodge of different deployments in your infrastructure. All of those situations can make it hard to impossible to properly instrument your code. But you can still use application observability because we also put out a solution based on eBPF. eBPF doesn't require you to instrument any of your code. It just relies on the Linux and soon the Windows kernel to analyze and send data about the calls which your applications make into the kernel APIs and we derive the data from that. So we built on this cutting edge technology of eBPF to create Grafana Baylor for you. Again, Baylor leverages OTLP, so you can send all your data to all the open telemetry compatible observability solutions like ours. It's fully open source, licensed under Apache license version two. For those who missed it, we announced our acquisition of Asserts AI in last November. And as we, got to, got to, as we got to know the team better, we were really impressed by their technology stack, by how they worked, how smart and focused they were on solving the problem of getting an oversight over all your data. And we immediately hit it off. And we are really, really looking forward to keep integrating deeper and deeper and deeper with all of this technology. I dare say you might be blown away by what you're about to see. Uh, so it's my absolute pleasure to introduce a new coworker of mine, Manoj, to the stage. Thank you. Uh, it's great to see you all. I am a local Bay Area resident, so I don't travel like Richie <laughs> <laughs> and all the, all the other coworkers. Uh, very excited to be here. Uh, let me tell you a little bit of a story about myself and my team. Um, so before I started Asserts, I was at a company called AppDynamics. Uh, I moved to Bay Area in 2009 when I joined AppDynamics. I was a fifth employee there and uh, was part of that for 10 years and building all the application APM products there. Um, but through those time, I, uh, me and my team, we were obviously heavy users of AppDynamics, inside AppDynamics. Uh, we had a trouble. Um, we had a fairly complex architecture, and we had pretty good at building alerts from our systems, but those alerts would just fire nonstop, and we didn't know how to correlate them, you know, how to figure out what the root cause is. We often had to call our best engineers. Um, so me and my coworkers, you know, eight of us, kind of left Abdi to start asserts uh, to build this product. And last year, October, we joined Grafana Labs, and very excited to show you how it is now working inside Grafana. So just to make sure I'm not fooling you, welcome, please welcome the newest member to the Grafana left navigation called Asserts. Um, it's not available to everybody yet, but we are already onboarding our first 10 customers and you know, uh, starting to work with a lot more people who are already Grafana in Grafana Cloud. So um, the way Asserts works is, uh, let me quickly bring up this screen here. Um, so you, 
refresh my screen, laptop is probably slipping for a while. So when you send your data to Grafana Cloud, your metrics and traces, the metrics and traces in Prometheus Open Telemetry world already have a lot of metadata built into them. So they have labels. And in the Open Telemetry specification, they have resource attributes. So what you can do is we can join these labels and discover a service graph. Uh, I use the word service graph. Um, it'll, when I use the word service, you know, oftentimes you know, APM tools provide you different views. You, know, you want to look at your infrastructure, go to this other section. You want to look at network, go to this other part, right? But when we conceived a search from ground up, we had the opportunity to think through it. What if we could build all this data together and store it in a graph database? So when you are looking at the search, you know, it'll already discover your, depending on your environment, it'll discover your namespaces and parts and nodes and you know, how they'll link to each other. So for example, I can look at the service here, they're connected to this part here, and this part is connected to this node. So it's like one massive graph that is getting built here and kept it in for you. But you don't have to worry about it, you know, how it is stored and everything else. Um, now, let me switch your attention to this application that I am the tech lead for called Robot Shop. Um, so when I type robot shop services, essentially what I did is I have saved a query, which is saying that all the services that belongs to namespace robot shop, I want to see them and how they are talking to each other. Now, uh, this is interesting. Um, I can see the connections and these connections could be derived from your service mesh data, from your open telemetry traces, or the newest addition to Grafana family, the Bela agent, where we can actually instrument uh, below layer seven, you know, look at actual network bytes, the bytes flowing between different systems. So you can see those green lines here are actually coming from Bela. So uh, when I switch this time range from five minutes to 24 hours, what you'd notice is that suddenly this looks way more colorful now, it's more, more interesting. So all of you who have used APM tools, you know, you probably understand this idea of like, you know, APM tools have automatic knowledge, you know, built-in knowledge of what is important to you. So asserts is fundamentally built to the same concept. Um, it's just that it is completely agentless. So for example, here, these services are now stack ranked with my Nginx ingress controller on the very top, followed by my shipping service because they are exhibiting what we are calling as a lot of assertions. So the idea of assertion is a lot like, you know, we are engineers, we write code, and we write tests. So what if you could run tests or checks on your runtime, on your runtime telemetry data? So for example, here, the system is automatically detected, uh, like a new version was deployed, and some anomalies have happened here. Now I'm getting curious, I want to start looking into more so by just clicking this button um, called Troubleshooting Workbench, what uh, Asserts did is behind the scenes, it went and scanned the graph and identified only the services connected to shipping and the infra on it which it is running and built a flame graph of all the different alerts. Now Richie was talking about writing PromQL. Now PromQL is fun, interesting when you're into the zone, but once you're out of the zone, it's not fun anymore. So, <laughs> so it's like, what if we don't have to write PromQLs? You know, what if we could codify all this PromQL into a system? So, uh, so for example, we look out for saturations and amends being changes, new deployments, anomalies here, and failures and errors. This stuff that we always look out for when we're troubleshooting, right? So Asserts has codified all this knowledge for different ecosystem. Like in this case, when I zoom in, I am looking at now the shipping service at the very top here, showing that there was a new deployment happened, and there was a massive spike in garbage collection, and there is a latency anomaly on two different endpoints. Now, these baselines that are getting created are all automatic for you. So we know the metrics, we know the baselines, and we are generating uh, the assertions for you so that when you are troubleshooting, they're just readily available. You are not have to get alerted on each and every one of them. You can see it all in one place in one group. Now, let me quickly jump into the summary view where I can see a mini graph 
of like how these things are connected. So you can see that uh, the ingress controller here is the load balancer, receiving traffic, talking to shipping service, and going to MySQL. And then uh, a new version was applied. So we know cube container info metrics. We know a new container ID was generated. So we automatically watching the labels. We figured out, okay, new version was deployed. So we are observing every endpoint and creating baselines. So that's why we know there's a latency anomaly on this specific endpoint. So, and as we scroll down here, you can see the MySQL has a spike in the buffer pool request and network bytes. Now, what's interesting is that you have your infra metrics from Prometheus, from CubeState metrics, from MySQL exporter, you have your traces from what telemetry or BLI is sending your network bytes. So we are able to combine all the data in a one single cohesive fashion and show you all the signals without you have to worry about writing rules out of building dashboards for each one and every one of them. Now, with that said, you know, I love my Grafana dashboards. So I definitely, I'm seeing a JVM spike here. I'm getting curious and I want to look into the garbage collection metrics here. So when I click on this KPI, um, what we do is we automatically uh, recognize that this is a JVM micrometer running Spring Boot service. So you have pulled in the right dashboard for you and showing you the relevant metrics for that instance for that time. So you don't have to construct this dashboard or remember where it is kept in which folder. It's all organized for you, all kept for you, um, so that you can access it in a single click. Now, if I am looking at my latency anomaly here, now I'm really curious now which line of code, what exactly happened? Um, maybe there's a call to a SQL database, can I see the query? So typically all this information will not be in metrics, but they're very much in the traces. So I can jump into traces, then a search will automatically filter out the service name, the endpoints, and pull in the slow traces for you. And showing you the classic tempo uh, trace view that you're very familiar with, so, but it's contextualized for you and pull in for you. Now, um, the one last thing I'll add here is that when you are looking at all this data, you're looking at all the level one connections, but the graph can be really long and wieldy. So if you really get curious, now to see did this affect anything else, you can start asking all kind of interesting questions to this graph, saying show me other problematic connections. You know, what else happened because this application was having this outage? So you can ask this question and it'll instantly start querying the system to bring you the level two connections and level three connections. Anyway, there's a lot more to tell about the certs, but I'd love to show you at the Ask the Experts booth. So please come and see us. Thank you so much. So there is a lot going on with ML in the industry. And to be clear, a lot of unsubstantiated hype. To date, machine learning hasn't proven to be a magic bullet. We are very much focused on a pragmatic approach. We make targeted investments, like for example, adaptive thresholds, forecasting, outlier detection. We see Gen AI as yet another tool to help you solve problems. For example, LLMs and vector DBs offer new opportunities to understand your systems. We set ourselves three main goals with our, our endeavors into MLAI. The first main goal is to minimize toil. We are accomplishing this by building solutions like application observability or like asserts to give a little bit of assistance when you need it the most or to give you a real boost when you really, really need it. Second, it is to provide key insights to your team to accelerate their understanding of changes in the system. Part of this is bringing those key insights into your team's investigation processes. Also part of this is to just aid engineers who are looking across the different observability signal types for connections across all of them, metrics, logs, traces, profiles. And finally, we must reduce noise in the system. A lot of the current solutions 
generate more noise for people to filter through. And this actually starts to drag engineers down. It makes you slower, not quicker. Unnecessary noise reduces your velocity. And that means you don't get to solve the problems of your customers and solving business needs. You just have to deal with all the extra noise. We're doing all of this the Grafana way. Open source, Big Tent, transparency. Open source and Big Tent and transparency are key to everything we do. Talking about open source, other vendors are repeating mistakes from the past. They build black boxes, they build proprietary solutions, they're clearly open source will win. Open source is in our DNA. We've been developing in the open since day one. Big tent. In this case, we mean giving you a choice about what LLMs you want to be using. Today, we support OpenNI and Azure, and we're actively working on supporting more. We really give, want to give your teams the flexibility to hold the keys and choose your own direction in your LLM story. And transparency. Many enterprises have fears about what is being sent into those black box large language models. At Grafana, we default to open. Open data sets, open prompts, open development. This allows your team confidence in this emerging space. And to be very clear on something, we never ever train on customer data. If you want us to, we can fine tune it on it. We can fine tune on it. So let's look at the LLM app. We've built GenAI directly into our Grafana open source. By this, we have a fully open and shared framework which everyone can use to build on top of the LLM features within Grafana. Not just our internal Grafanistas, everyone in the open source community as well. This is a great example of a small assist. And this can quickly make teams more efficient and effective at their jobs. What you see here is us using an LLM as a helper to add titles and descriptions to dashboards and panels. This is not a huge game changer, but it helps engineers with small hurdles. It helps them get started. It helps you build a common language throughout your, all of your teams, throughout all of your org, without having to do all the synchronization work on the social level. And this, by extension, makes your dashboards more robust and more easy co to consume for other parts of the org. What we see here is we're using the context of a discussion around an incident to boost the team building a summary for said incident. Solutions like this can really start the learning and the communication process for teams which might not always be doing post-incident reviews. And then they can augment this as, as they see fit. In the end, this improves the level of detail and the timeliness of informing stakeholders. In our tests, we found that if you start with this, you have a 3% on average higher score in semantic similarity scoring than if you start with a human-generated summary. And this also allows you to really quickly just update other stakeholders about the current status of an incident. And finally, we can use LLMs to jumpstart more challenging tasks. Like again, for example, writing PromQL. Here we've built a vector model based on thousands of open source PromQL queries. And we can use those alongside OpenAI to allow users to write more effective queries more quickly. And also they get feedback. So there is a cycle built in of reinforcement learning and actually again, building tools which make subject matter experts more efficient and effective at their jobs, not pretending we can just replace them. And finally, there's SIFT. SIFT helps you quickly identify connections to accelerate understanding when you need it the most during an incident. SIFT uses all of the data, all of the context to accelerate your team. We extend IRM on top of the observability data you already have. You can trigger a SIFT check from any change in your system from an alert, from on-call, from an escalation, from a dashboard, from an explore, it doesn't matter. But you are in control, you choose to go that path. And then we do the hard work for you. And one of the things which is often overlooked, 
in most companies these days, Grafana has the most context about your business already. So we have the most powerful ways to get insights from of that, all of that data. We can look across all the different signals to find correlated changes, again, once you trigger this as the subject matter experts. We really accelerate engineers in understanding system behaviors and behaviors when systems change. What we see here are resource connections from CubeSate metrics. There's a slow request from the traces, there's an error patterns from the logs. So we drill down automatically into the error pattern logics using Drain, basically expanding and massively reducing the search space at every single step and doing this automatically in the background for you. In this case, we found logs which the surrounding Kubernetes service has and found several patterns in this. And four of those patterns correlate with significant changes. When drilling into the errors, we see the exact log lines which represent the pattern, and also we see the rate changes during the incident. Thank you. <laughs> and we already accelerated the engineers with better understanding of the system. But we can take this one step further. We can integrate with the LLM and with the Gen AI and describe typical problems and resolutions which correlate with this type of error log. Again, not pretending it's going to be perfect, but kickstarting people and giving them a path to start at if they're out of options. All of this is available on cloud already, so you can just use it. So to summarize, first, we looked how we make things easier with the help of, of Explore. Went through all our new launches, including Loki 3.0, Bela, Asserts. And finally, we walked through how a deliberate and respectful engineering approach to LLMs and Gen AI might actually look like. Thank you very much. <laughs>